Prince. 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 As far as Prince's influence, I didn't know how important Prince was to our community until he passed. Anything you ever did for the community, I appreciate. Uh, there's so much. There's so many things that Prince has done for this community. As a music therapist, I was working over at Regions Hospital, and a lot of times when we see patients, we're asking about what music is most important to them because that's the music we create the therapy around. And so many people would speak of Prince as if they knew him in this really informal way. When I was a kid, I went to Harvard's Preparatory School, and I heard that he actually wrote the check that allowed them to open their doors originally back in the day. You don't know a lot of the things that he, he did, which is I like. I think the best form of giving is anonymous. The tsunami 10 years ago, Prince picked up the phone and said, we gotta do something, and made a huge contribution, you know, more than, uh, I think the, the panelists said, more than all of our salaries combined here in this building, um, and never said another word about it, and didn't expect anyone to know about it. One of my favorite things that he does for the community is show up to see local bands at the Dakota. Just him being there, him saying, like, you're valuable enough for me to show up. But I think that that ability and that value to just do good to do good. The artistry of a single individual uh, to literally put a space on the map. A connector he was to all of us. He was really our North Star. That First Avenue venue, that venue creates such a sense of community. It's such an amazing space to see music. Jana Shortall did a great job when she said that the passing of Prince really helped outsiders here in the Twin Cities to understand how he was the connective tissue between really different, diverse populations of people. He was our home. He was something we all had in common. We took so much pride in him, and he took so much pride in this place. Prince got me a date. <laughs> His biggest influence on me is being 100% holistically yourself, regardless. I'm forever grateful um, for Prince for having the courage to be who he was. Prince just had people losing their minds just by you know, oozing all of his truth and love of himself, you know, and inspiring that love in other people, you know, just to accept yourself. He was playing with gender when nobody played with gender. As an African-American man to play with gender on the highest stage, wow. And he was so cool about it. Being comfortable in those high heel shoes, will take care of itself. Anything that's supposed to be yours or be yours, any spot that's supposed to be yours, nobody can take away because it's yours. I think him choosing to change his name to get out of his recording contract was pretty impactful for artists and for somebody who does creative work. Not being a victim of your circumstances and finding a way out of a situation to empower yourself, that just was an impactful statement and influences me when I feel like I'm stuck. The creating of, of music that touches us all uh, is uh, a gift that will keep on giving. There was a moment where he stepped up from like his private booth, like he stepped to the corner, right? So I saw him and I dashed over and I was like, oh my God, it's Prince. And he put his hand, like his hands out and I put my hands out like this and we held hands for like two minutes, like two solid minutes. But in the midst of us holding hands, he was actually telling one of my friends to shut the hell up so he could hear the music in the shadiest way. He was like, oh, do you hear that? Do, do you hear that? He was shady as hell. It was the best thing I've ever seen. When I was in college, I spent a semester in Florence, Italy, and there was a nightclub there where I would go play just for fun and to plug into that community. And the guy who ran the club, his name was Chiro, he was a real character. I think he was drunk most of the time, <laughs> but he would always start out with the song Purple Rain. <laughs> and he would say, to, uh, to love music is to love Prince. He's like crying while he plays it. He's kind of belligerent drunk, but it was so passionate. And you could tell he had such a connection with Prince's music. I have this like really silly memory of sitting with my mom watching TV. I think I must have been in like third or fourth grade and we had just moved to a new state. I moved around a lot. And Prince came on TV, and I don't know if it was like SNL or an award show or something else, but um, I'll never forget her going like, he's sexy. And me being little, being like, what? He's like singing about, you know, I didn't, under I didn't understand what was so like sexy about him um, and what was so like attractive. But when I think about like my mom and where she's coming from in that moment and then where I am now, which I'm, I'm now almost the same age that she was at that time, 
um, I think that there's a, a sense of connectivity around that. Like now, I get it. I get it now. <laughs> My favorite Prince dance move that I would never do. You know, those jumping splits were something else. If you're asking me to do it, you're out your mind. Whatever he was doing in Darling Nikki, that was cool. Ooh, like, ooh, electric. You feel that electricity in your body. You just feel like, Nikki, girl, girl. It's not so much just his moves, it's the compilation of all this genius in one body. He can dance, he can sing, he can play, he can relate, he's funny. You know what I mean? He's a showman. So you got all of these kind of like dope individual things in one body. That is like, to me, makes one of the greatest pop stars, artists, musicians, people ever to walk the planet Earth.